Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday, about 11.42 a.m. here, California time, August 14, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.8 into the California area, also a 3.5 here across the Indonesia Islands region where we're seeing a little swarming going on here. Got a bunch of fives and some other smaller quakes stirring up here across the southern end of the Java Trench where they can see some uh, rather large earthquakes. All right, let's check out California here real quick first. Uh, actually, Nevada. I want to check out Nevada here where we have another earthquake coming in within the last hour around Lake Med. That's uh, just south or east here of Las Vegas, a 2.0 coming in within the last hour. Uh, this earthquake comes in following a, uh, a little swarm of activity here in this area of Nevada to the northwest here of Las Vegas. Uh, they've seen a 4.4 stirring up here in this area last night, felt fairly broadly across the area. And uh, since then, we've seen a handful of aftershocks here coming in. A bunch of ones and some smaller quakes as well. But notice here, these are very small microquakes below the one magnitude. It's kind of odd that they show below one here on this activity, but on the earthquake activity in California, they didn't. It's a little weird. Either way, uh, that trail of activity is still here. But most of the clustering is going on centered around that 4.4 that struck last night. Uh, still a little uncertain on to uh, which fault system this occurred on. Uh, it is just outside of the uh, air base area, which uh, let me pull up satellite data here, which sits a little bit further to the southeast here. Some type of airfield there. And um, that activity just stirring up out here in the Nevada desert. Roughly about five to six miles below the surface here. Um, so we're continuing to keep an eye on that. There's numerous fault systems that run throughout Nevada. Nevada, you know, obviously a state that sees a lot of earthquake activity. And uh, we'll watch here, see what's going on further to the southeast with this most recent earthquake there. A little 2.0 just outside of Henderson and closer to Las Vegas. But I uh, got a decent swarm here. Let's see what we got here for the total tally. Uh, I got about 40 earthquakes here in this sequence of uh, activity here outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. Goodness. All right, Southern California got a new swarm kicking up here just outside the Salton Sea area. Look at this. A little bit of earthquake activity stirring up here where we've seen a 3.4 this morning and a couple other smaller quakes in there as well. This is a little sketchy as well in terms of the proximity to the location of the San Andreas Fault here. You know, of course, over the last... 10 days or so we have seen a number of earthquakes out here in various locations and now we got a new swarm stirring up here just towards the southern end of the san andreas fault but on the pacific side here of the plate boundary the san andreas is going to be right here an extensional boundary here spreading center where there's been some old volcanic activity uh, historically and then that turns back into the uh, imperial fault and goes down southward this is the brawley seismic zone right here uh, and this earthquake activity occurring just to the west of there could potentially be on the one of the southern segments of the San Jacinto Fault Zone or just off of it. But either way, we got some further escalation of earthquake activity out here in Southern California today. Got to keep an eye on that. Uh, around the Los Angeles area where we've seen that 4.4, um, mostly smaller microquake out here today. There's been a couple smaller quakes this morning. Uh, total tally so far following that 4.4 uh, on the Puente Hills Fault, Thrust Fault here. Obviously a major hazard for Los Angeles. Got about 22 earthquakes following that 4.4. There was actually a couple in there prior to that 4.4, if I remember. One, two, three of them. And this is the same area that's seen a little bit of activity back in June. And the Puente Hills Fault is capable of producing a 7.2 to a 7.5 earthquake underneath this area no joke that's uh that is the facts and um you know one day i i asked dr lucy jones here uh, a couple different questions and she's not answering me in terms of when the last big one struck out here on the puente hills thrust faults a re recently discovered fault uh back in the late 80s they discovered it after the uh, whittier earthquake but uh, I can't find any information when the last major rupture was. 
And according to the USGS, uh, there's a big one on this specific fault here. Not the San Andreas Fault, but this specific fault that runs through Los Angeles here, the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, every two to 3,000 years, they get a big one, 7.2 to 7.5. So when was the last one? There's been four of them over the last 11,000 years, they claim. So I would like Dr. Lucy Jones to answer my questions there. Maybe I'll send her another email and see what uh, see what she states there. Maybe nobody knows, but uh, goodness. All right, here's the uh, Bakersfield area where they seen that 5.2 over. Yeah, it's been over a week now. So I have to show the last 30 days of activity here in this specific region. And it's a big number. Most of this, if not all of this earthquake activity, occurred following that 5.2 earthquake about, uh, well, it's on the 6th of August here. So we're looking at um, just about eight days ago. That's a lot of aftershock activity, quite a bit. And there's been a number of fours, a number of threes, number of twos. And here's today's earthquake activity. There are quite a few ones coming in this morning. Uh, some more twos in there as well. In fact, uh, that's actually quite a bit here for a, for a one-day tally uh, when that earthquake was, uh, you know, over a week or so back. 18 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. So things are still amplified. We got numerous locations out here showing elevated activity all around the San Andreas Fault here. Goodness. Uh, even one area up here north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone near Ridgecrest, where we're seeing a little bit of swarming. Uh, this swarm uh, coincidentally fired up roughly about the same time as we've seen the 5.2 over here outside of Bakersfield. So we got numerous locations pretty much drawing a lengthy triangle across Southern California here that we're watching. And of course, now further movement inland towards Las Vegas area, Nevada area. This is all a sign of regional strain and stress out here, specifically in the Southern California area around this Garlock Fault shear zone right here southward, a little bit to the north here. Um, where northward, we really haven't seen a lot of activity. Some movement here on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, a little bit uh, up here around the San Ramon area as well, a couple smaller quakes off the Calaveras Fault. Uh, but not uh most of the activity has been confined here roughly in this area and uh, it doesn't look like we're done yet still uh seeing some amplified conditions out there uh there's the cascadia subduction zone remember i said to watch for some further increasing activity out here um well it looks like yeah look at that so 1708 roughly about the same time okay so while we are seeing the divergent boundary activity out here this is a separation of the seafloor notice those ridges this is new oceanic crust being formed throughout time and um, when this takes place here that adds further strain these ridges are a, uh, a good indicator of the the pressurization going on here uh, in plate tectonics across the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone and when we get earthquake activity out here that tends to amplify conditions out here. We've seen it almost immediately. Look at this from yesterday. <clears throat> so we've seen a, a 3.0 a out there in the Gordo Ridges, about 1607. And then an hour later, another one, a 2.5 at 1708. But look what occurred following this activity, almost immediately following this activity, a 1.7 on the Cascadia subduction zone itself. So that's why I'm saying when we see further activity out here in the ridges, it increases pressure out here, not to mention the trimmer activity that's occurring down into the subduction zone itself. So, uh, you know, we got numerous factors out here that could lead to big earthquakes. And uh, I don't think it's only Southern California that we're going to see elevated activity for a little while. It may be potentially other regions as well that have not shown any full-scale rupture in over 324 years. That's a lot of time built up out here for the Cascadia. Further increasing strain here at the southern segment. We don't have to see a full rupture here with a 9.0 or greater. But we could see a partial rupture, and these partial ruptures haven't occurred in quite a while. And uh, looking back throughout the time frame, we see that they occur intermittently. Uh, on occasion between full ruptures. Not all the time, but uh, it seems like most of the time 
a partial rupture will slip in there. And that's uh, a little concerning because that can be upwards of an 8.1, 8.4 earthquake here. And that would, uh, you know, be a big one, but not as big as a full-scale rupture up to a 9.0 or greater. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. We'll check trimmer out tonight as well. With this activity stirring up, it should increase the trimmer count down here in this area. Uh, and the Cascadia trimmer is going to be the slippage so to speak between the two plates down into the subduction zone 35 45 kilometers there's a little bit there yesterday uh, but i don't think this counted all of them um, so we'll have to see what uh, today's trimmer count comes out to i've seen a little bit up there in washington as well quite a bit uh, 464 epicenters into the subduction zone of the cascadia all right uh, there's that look at that clustering going on out here goodness bunch of fives out here all right um let's check out the rest of the states here before we get too distracted las vegas bunch of you can almost draw a line right here and occasionally even this area fills in leading up to salt lake city there's a there's a mountain range at crest right here that you can follow on the map here the topography of the map shows a crest leading down to this area and it looks like most of the locked um, pressurization and earthquake activity is limited to this line southward, but that includes this area up here. So we'll continue to keep an eye on Southern California and Nevada. We should maybe see a little bit of increasing activity up northward here. We'll watch that throughout the day. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Let me check out Yellowstone real quick. I just send Missy Mimi's a message real quick. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, what do we got here? This is from yesterday. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, there's a thunderstorm activity. We discussed that last night uh, right here that showed up. Uh, late afternoon time period there in Yellowstone, pretty intense thunderstorms rolled through and left a whole bunch of seismic noise on the seismographs. But uh, as far as earthquake activity goes, there's not a whole lot. A lot of this is just environmental noise as far as wind and, and uh, uh, other maybe machinery out there. But there's no earthquake activity. Zip zero, nada. Texas oil fields getting hit. Oklahoma, New Madrid seismic zone had a 1.2 yesterday. Got a little activity up around Ohio as well from yesterday, 1.8. All right, Hawaii area. See what's going on here. Got a pretty decent swarm of activity out here, it looks like. A little clustering going on here. This is fairly deep, though. About 19 miles or so into the uh, the plumbing chambers of the magma transport system here that fuels the Kilauea Volcano and Kilo uh, Mauna Loa. So things are amplifying out here where they have been stationary here. Um, we've seen that huge displacement of magma from the summit to the upper east rift zone recently and it's just been sitting there with a slowly uh, slow amount of migration here a lot of pressurization underneath this area but it has not broken through uh, in terms of creating an eruption still a little uncertain on to what we're going to see but we need to watch um, here in the hours and days ahead following this deeper activity down in pahala that could recharge and fuel the system up here and then from there where do we go uh, more than likely uh, there's a, a number of different scenarios, but uh, we're either going to see a fissure event take place up here across the upper east or may maybe the middle east rift zone, or we'll see that displacement go out further, maybe even south. That would be the worst case scenario over here, though. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, as far as the, hold on a second here, the charts go today. Let's check this out real quick. See what we got for the uh, data deformation data which is uh we're going up starting to get a recharge there of the uh, summit area this is the inflation chart here past week past month there's our huge magma displacement back in the uh, end of july lost a lot of volume of magma from the summit over to the upper east rift zone and now we're starting to go back up here across the summit area so just uh it's a waiting game keep saying that day by day but that's about all we can do is wait on this and see what uh see what the volcano wants to do 
All right, Alaska, typical movement. Western Pacific out here, fairly quiet. Um, not a whole lot going on across Japan for now. Taiwan southward here, getting that increasing activity. Uh, but watch this region here with that clustering going on. It looks like something wants to build in here with a uh, maybe a bigger earthquake. Getting a lot of bouncing back and forth here between two separate regions. And uh, that's a good sign there of things getting ready to maybe uh, kick up in terms of larger scale movement. New Zealand pretty quiet. One deep earthquake there into the Tonga Trench. And um, let's see what we got. I know the Middle East area seen some earthquake activity yesterday. Syria seen uh, some movement out there. Seen a 5.0 and a 4.5 yesterday, but it doesn't look like anything else has came in uh, today. So far, maybe a little smaller aftershock activity. Uh, let's go check out Iceland here because that's another area that uh, has reached, I think, maximum pressurization down here. Uh, rift, various rift zones out here all across Iceland shown some elevated earthquake activity. And more specifically down here across the Grindavik area northward into the craters region. This is the Blue Lagoon area, right? Tourist spot. I've never been up there. I think it'd be kind of cool, but a little, a little dangerous out there with the uncertainty in terms of eruption, right? Eruption possibilities. But they, they do a good job of getting people out of there quickly. Uh, Savart Singhi Power Plant right next to a tourist attraction. Um, but earth, earthquake activity is uh, kicking up here a little bit in the last 12 hours. Pressurization uh, at about 20 uh, million cubic meters of magma, I believe. Let me see what we're at. I'm pretty certain that was a number they threw out a couple days ago, so I'm sure it's a little bit more than that right now. Uh, 20 million cubic meters of magma underneath this area. Recent earthquake activity has been increasing, and um, we're getting close. Explosions here. <clears throat> Magma flows and explosions can start at any time, but previous examples show that it could be delayed. But uh, obviously, we want to. We will. We'll know about it. Obviously, earthquake activity will be increasing for sure. Got something coming in there to Cal State, Bakersfield area. A little earthquake. Couple stations offline here, but we'll get. Uh, we'll get that running here. All right, folks. I'm going to jump off here real quick. I'll continue to monitor the earthquake activity uh, around Southern. Whoa! What do we got here? Another 3.3 in the Bakersfield area. That's that spike I just seen there on the graph. Doesn't look like that big of an earthquake, but it it's showing up as a 3.3. Uh, I'm telling you, things are still quite active out here in various locations, all pointing a triangle. And what's weird is it's the same shape as the Garlock Fault shear zone here. And the, and the plate boundary itself here, the San Andreas Fault. Look at that. Choop and then choop. Watch this area, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later.